Okay, time for some super important review. You have a skeletal system test coming up. We are going to review some questions as well as some concepts because, well, quite frankly, I just want you to do well. So there were six major topics in the skeletal system and we're gonna kind of brush over all of them in this review lesson, okay? So again, some of the questions that people struggled with, we're gonna address, but also some content that has been problematic. So the first topic was names of bones. So here was a question, the radius is medial to the ulna. Medial, remember, means closer to the midline, lateral further away from the midline. The radius is the bone in your um, forearm that is closer to your thumb, the ulna on your pinky side. So the radius, remember, we always remember that the body is in anatomical position when we have those questions. It would be false. The radius, in fact, would be lateral. Calcaneus. What's the calcaneus? The heel bone. Okay. And the sternum is the breastbone. So when you're standing in anatomical position, your calcaneus is lateral up through to the sternum. All right. So let's go through the number of bones. Number of bones in the coccyx, tailbone. Four, but they're fused. Ossicles, three, each ear. Sacrum, five, fused. That's your butt bone. Number of pairs of ribs, 12. Lumbar vertebrae, five. Cervical vertebrae, seven. So cervical, seven. Thoracic, 12. That's how many rib pairs you have. Lumbar, five. Sacrum, five. Fused. And the coccyx, four. Fused. The number of bones in your leg, it's four. The number of bones in your arm is only three. Why? The patella. All right, number of bones in the human body, 206, remember that number is higher in children as all the bones have not fully ossified. Number of bones in each hip bone, three, they're fused. The ilium, the ischium, the pubis. The number of floating rib pairs, two. So we have seven true ribs, five false ribs, and two of the false rib pairs are floating rib pairs. You have to know the names and locations of all the bones don't know which ones you're going to be tested on. So let's go over a few of the problematic ones. So in the arm, humerus, radius, thumb side, ulna, pinky side, carpals, wrist, metacarpals, hand, notice there is one in the thumb, phalanges, fingers. And we're going to go over this in more detail on a later slide. And then the leg, it's comparable. You have the femur, you have the tibia, the bigger bone, and the fibula is the smaller bone that is lateral. And then you have metatarsals, you have meta, um, you have the tarsals, and you have phalanges. Difference, patella. Okay, the skull. Okay, also remember here you have this hyoid bone tucked under your mandible. But we have frontal bone, parietal, occipital, and temporal. We already covered this, but let's go over briefly again. Cervical, seven vertebrae. Thoracic, 12 vertebrae. Lumbar, five vertebrae. Sacrum, butt bone, five fused. Coccyx, tailbone, four fused. Ribs, you have 12 pairs. Seven of those pairs, the first seven are true ribs. The remaining five pairs are false ribs. And the last two of the false ribs are floating ribs. They don't even attach to the sternum at all. And I like to think of them as your kidney protectors. Here is the pelvis, your hip bones. So you can see they're fused together, okay? And you have the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis on each side fused together. But you can see how the sacrum and the coccyx together with the pelvic bones uh, create your pelvic girdle. Now, hands and feet. So we have carpals, we have metacarpals. Okay, now, in the phalanges is where we have some differences. If you look at the color coding, in all of the phalanges, you will see proximal phalanges. In all of them, you will see distal phalanges. But notice, the pollux, the thumb, is missing the intermediate phalanges. Okay? At the foot, same deal. Okay, We have tarsals. You have to know the name of one only. That's the calcaneus. Then we have metatarsals. All of the phalanges have proximal phalanges. All of the phalanges have distal phalanges, but the hallux, the big toe, is missing the intermediate 
calculate. All right, let's go on to intro and functions. The femur, the longest bone in the body, ossifies last. Eh, negative. The bone to ossify last, uh, well, sort of a tie, the clavicle, okay, as well as the facial bones. They ossify, finish ossifying around 25 years old. Okay, infants at birth have more red marrow than yellow marrow. In fact, pretty much they're all red marrow. As people age, the amount of yellow marrow increases. Yellow marrow is used to store fat, while red marrow is used for hematopoiesis, which is blood cell formation. Okay. Now, um, in times of great blood loss, some of that red marrow can get converted um, from yellow marrow temporarily, and then it will go back to red marrow when you're done uh, with the need to create more blood cells. So if you look, infant, whole skeleton, red marrow. You look at the adult skeleton. Well, there's a lot of yellow marrow now, but you see where the red marrow is concentrated, okay? Um, the limbs are primarily all yellow marrow, except for you can see where the um, femur attaches to um, the pelvis and the same at the top where the humerus um, attaches in those ball and socket joints. You do find some red marrow there. And a couple more reminders from this topic. Uh, axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton, axial along the axis, cranium, hyoid, ossicles, vertebrae, ribs, and sternum. The appendicular is appendages. Okay? It's how they attach to the axial skeleton, your arms and legs and their attachments. Okay, and then some functions of the skeleton. And a reminder that the skeleton is not just bones, it's cartilage, it's joints, it's ligaments, it's how all those bones are held together, okay? So your skeleton protects, it stores fat, it produces blood cells, it produces minerals, it helps with movement, it supports shape, okay? It has a lot of functions. Now types of bones, okay? This is going to be a relatively short one. What bone is that? Hmm, well, that's the sternum. Okay, and the sternum is a flat bone. Okay, flat bones are like shields. They are protectors, and the sternum is your heart protector. Okay, and it's located there in your body. It's what your ribs attach to. Okay, so only long bones, that would be there in the forearm. Irregular bones would be your vertebrae. Couple more reminders. Okay, so let's just look at the types of bones as an overview, okay? We have long bones, which is all of your arms, except for your, um, your carpal bones. So your whole entire arm, except for your carpal bones. Same with your leg. It's your whole entire leg, except for the patella and the tarsal bones, okay? Those are all long bones. All the little bones in your fingers are little, but they're still long bones. And then your um, carpals and your tarsals are short bones, okay? Your patella is a cestoid bone, okay? And then we have irregular bones and flat bones. The flat bones are shields. Um, they're protectors, so um, they're shaped that way. And they're regular, just kind of, they don't fit in any sort of category, okay? So again, you can see from this image of the hand, all the phalanges and metacarpals are long bones. The radius and ulna are long bones, but those carpals are short bones. All right, so now let's look at bone anatomy. All right, so labeling this image, we have cartilage covering the ends of bones, the periosteum covering the diaphysis. We have spongy bone located in the epiphysis. We have compact bone in the diaphysis. And we have the medullary cavity containing marrow in the center of the diaphysis. An osteocyte is a bone building cell. Hmm, no. Okay, so here are the types of cells. All right, the osteocyte, mature bone cell. It helps to regulate the amount of calcium. Osteoblasts are the builders, and osteoclasts are the cleaners, and they help to break down bone. So osteoclasts, the cleaners, you see they're breaking it down. Osteoblasts are the builders. You see they're laying down new bone. Marrow is found here. Oh, I talked about it already in the diaphysis in that medullary cavity located in the diaphysis. The weakest part of a skeleton, well, that would be the epiphyseal plate, okay? That's the growth plate, okay? 
say you are the weakest link. And a couple more reminders. So, okay, here's the structures of osteons. Osteon, a unit of bone in the center, central canal. Okay. Between central canal and central canal, you will have perforated canals. Okay. So that's labeled right here. Here's a perforated canal, right? Central canal, central canal. This is perforating. This would also be another perforating. Osteon, the unit of bone, there's its central canal. Okay. Now you have coming um, out from central canals. So you have little tiny canaliculi. Those are little canals that are going to go to individual osteocytes. Okay. Now the structure of an osteon. Okay. We have the lamellae, which are rings, and we have the lacunae, which are the spaces, and in those spaces we find osteocytes. And those, remember, are those mature bone cells. Okay, notice you can see this spongy bone where it's not, uh, there's empty spaces. Okay, and then this is all compact bone. So osteons are units of compact bone. And here you can see the periosteum, that covering. All right, we're on to the next topic, joints. Which is a synovial joint? So here's a reminder. We have sutures, those are fibrous, intervertebral discs, those are cartilaginous, the gliding are synovial. Okay, and then we have pivot, gliding or plane, hinge, ball and socket, saddle, and condyloid or ellipsoid joints. Those are all synovial. All right, so let's look at what we have here. Ball and socket uh, would be between the femur and the pelvis, ellipsoidal or condyloid between the metatarsals and phalange, or metacarpals and phalange. Gliding between the tarsals or the carpals. Saddle, pollux only, your thumb. Pivot in your neck. It's between the cranium atlas, uh, which is sitting on the atlas vertebrae and the axis vertebrae. And hinge between the distal and intermediate phalanges, also your elbow, your knee, lots of locations. Couple more reminders. All right, so, <laughs> Here's me trying to come up with a little bit of an analogy to help you out. So we have these big words, synarthrotic, amphiarthrotic, diarthrotic. We have fibrous, cartilaginous, synovial. And synarthrotic is always fibrous. Amphiarthrotic is always cartilaginous. Diarthrotic is always synovial. So how do you keep it straight? Well, I came up with this little acronym. Maybe it helps you, maybe it doesn't, but it does help. And it is I'm sad, synarthrotic, amphiarthrotic, diarthrotic. For Christ's sake, fibrous, cartilaginous, synovial. Maybe it helps you. Okay, let's look at this infant skull. Do you see the anterior and posterior fontanelles, the soft spots? Notice the anterior one is larger. It will close last. And then you have the coronal suture going this way, the sagittal suture going this way, and the lambdoid suture in the posterior region of the skull. Okay, so now topic six, Ooh, we're almost the end. The most commonly broken bone in children, clavicle. Clavicle is a long bone. It does suffer um, some weakness, especially in falls. Okay. Which fracture is a red flag indicator of child abuse? That's the spiral fracture, okay? This picture makes me so sad. Look, it's a young child's femur spiral fracture. All right, spiral fracture is caused from twisting. Okay, match these fracture types. That's an oblique fracture angle. Remember, transverse straight across. That's a depression fracture. It's more depressed than it's from an impact to the skull. There we have a green stick fracture. It only breaks on one side. There we have a common muted fracture into a lot of pieces, at least three or more. And then we have a compression fracture. That's usually found in vertebrae. So what type of fracture is common in young children? That would be the green stick fracture, okay, where it bends on one side because remember their bones are not fully ossified and it breaks on the other. Couple more reminders. Okay, so let's look at all the fractures. Normal bone, transverse, straight across, oblique, angle. Could be downward, could be upward, doesn't matter, at an angle. Spiral, remember that jagged break from a twist. Comminuted, whole bunch of pieces. Avulsion, piece of the bone actually torn away. Compression, 
okay? Usually in the vertebrae, but it can happen in other bones. Depression in the skull. And a green stick, bend on one side, break on the other. A simple fracture doesn't break the skin. A compound fracture does break the skin, okay? Um, and a simple is also called closed, and a compound is also called open. And then you, each fracture could be simple or compound. It could also be displaced or non-displaced. Displaced means uh, out of alignment. Non-displaced, they're still lined up even though the bone is broken. Now let's talk about healing, okay? Four stages. First, you get a fracture and then a hematoma or blood clot. Then we get a soft callus, cartilage and collagen, and the osteoblasts begin laying down some bone, and there's going to be a bump in that soft callus. Then you're going to get a hard callus or bony callus next, and that the osteoblasts have been building and building and building, and now there is a bump of bone around where the fracture was. Okay. Then remodeling. So months to years, okay, the osteoblasts and osteoclasts are going to work together to remodel that bone. Now, it will never go back exactly because your bones will tell a story. They will kind of have like a scar that will say it, there was a fracture here. So four stages, hematoma, soft callus, which is collagen and cartilage, beginning bone building with osteoblasts, Bony callus, lots of bone building from the osteoblast. So there's a hard bony callus. And then remodeling, which involves coordination between osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And there you have it, an overview of the skeletal system. So hopefully you feel ready for the test. So good luck. Watch us again if you need to.